Kubernetes network policies are used when you want to control traffic flow at the IP address level 3 or port level layer 4. Network policies allow you to specify how a port is allowed to communicate with various network entities, such as other ports, namespaces and IP blocks. In this video, we're going to cover all of them and create network policy examples. There are some default network policies that you can apply to the namespace. Some will cover ingress traffic, which is a traffic that enters the boundary of a network. Others egress, traffic transferred from a host network to an outside network. And of course, you can combine ingress and egress rules in one policy. The first default policy is to deny all ingress and all egress traffic. This will be applied to all ports in the namespace where the network is created, for example, in the production namespace. The second one is deny all egress traffic only. This network policy selects all the ports in the production namespace and doesn't allow any egress traffic from those ports. The third one deny all ingress traffic only. The next one allow all egress traffic. And the last Last one, allow all ingress traffic. To use network policies, make sure you've configured a network provider with a network policy support. There are a number of network providers that support network policy, including this. For my EKS cluster, I will install Calico Network Policy Engine. If you are new here, please like and subscribe. Let's get started. First of all, let's install Calico Kubernetes Operator to our EKS cluster. Then install Calico itself using custom resource definition. To verify installation, let's make sure that all our pods are up. The number of pods has to be equal to the number of Kubernetes nodes. In this example, we're going to isolate pods in the same namespace. The only pod with a special label will be able to access another pod. Let's create a staging namespace. Now let's create a Kubernetes deployment for service A and also let's define the service object. We're going to run BusyBox and listen on port 8080. Let's do the same thing for the service B. Let's create a deployment and a service. And finally, let's use kubectl to apply our changes. Now let's list all the ports and services in the staging namespace. To check connection between pods, we're going to use nc command and use service B DNS name. Let's run it and verify that service A can access service B. Now let's create a network policy that only allows ingress traffic from the pods with the label access service B. Let's apply changes again and try to connect to the service B from service A. Let's wait a little bit and we're going to get timeout. It means that we're not able to reach service B. To fix this, let's modify our service A deployment object and add additional label access service B. Let's redeploy service A. check connection between service A and service B. Alright, now it's open. For the second example, we're going to use default network policy to isolate namespace. Let's create a production namespace and don't forget to add env production label, we're going to use it to identify namespace. Now let's create a similar deployment for the service C. Let's apply our changes. Now let's get ports in staging and production namespaces. Now let's try to access service C from service A. Since they are located in different namespaces, you need to add production namespace to the DNS name of the service C. Let's create a default network policy for production namespace that will deny all ingress and egress traffic. And try to access service C again. You're going to get timeout since all traffic is denied. To explicitly allow ingress traffic from different namespace, you need to create a network policy and specify namespace and label of the port. Let's apply our changes and try to connect to the server C again. And you can see that the port is open now. 
The last example will block all egress traffic except the IP block that we define in our network policy. Let's create deny egress IP block network policy and whitelist IP block. Now let's try to connect to one of the IP addresses from that IP block. But if you're going to try to reach Google, we're going to get timeout since Google's IP address is not whitelisted. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.